Okay, I'm here with Mike Cannon. We're just going to start a podcast uh, at the airport. But first, um, what do you think is going to happen with this rental car? <laughs> I mean, it does smell a little bit like weed. I never notice until I just get back into really? it. Okay. That's but that. I don't think it, it's not smoky, so I don't think it's a problem. That's not what I was talking about. Okay. I'm talking about I rented the car in Nashville with a return to Nashville. <laughs> yeah. And I had no intention of returning to Nashville. And instead, I was going to turn it to St. Louis. Um, <laughs> so we're on our way back. <laughs> I guess that's the teaser, and we will talk about what happened uh, from the airport. Yeah, I will. They have to take it. What are they gonna do? What are you? They're gonna force you to drive it back. Yeah, There's I'm no not, way. You, yeah, but like, will it be like hundred, two fifty? I'm hoping. That seems like a reasonable price to just be like, hey man, this is we it's the same it company. Yeah, figure it out. A thousand, and I'll be pissed. Get one of your underpaid slaves to drive it back. Yeah, how about I'll just give someone two hundred bucks? Well, anyway, we'll see. Coming up. After the break. everybody you ever just not have the energy you ever just like look i gotta get shit done <coughs> but i don't gotta work that hard at it that's how i felt this whole weekend on the road with mike cannon we're in uh what the fuck where are we buffalo no that's next week st louis <coughs> we went on a hike went to the zoo one day went on a hike another day I know, we were like, hey, let's do a podcast, but we kept putting it off. You gotta live your life. You gotta live your life. So we got it done. We got it done at the fucking airport from St. Louis. That's right. We spoke to you guys from, this is the fucking result of the DIY model. It's not just that people can do it everywhere. It's that they'll do it anywhere. You're either gonna read this as a fucking lack of effort or a monumental effort to get it done at the wire. A sacrifice bunt when you're down 7-1 in the ninth to beat the fucking spread. Yeah. I'm a national treasure, everybody. This country would fall apart without me. On today's episode, Mike Cannon. Shit, I already said that. Well, let me catch up on everything, you guys. First of all, my special tapes in New York, uh, 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 June 11th and 12th. Get tickets at ariShafir.com slash tour. Oh. I think the Sunday, sh well, the Sunday shows have been the last times I ever do that. It's been fun doing that fucking Jew hour on the road. Um, it's cool again. I met a Pentecostal lady in the audience in St. Louis. Pentecostal. Said her mom spoke to her in tongues. You got to fucking question that shit, you guys. Unless it's real. Or perhaps she was just from a foreign country. And then she just never taught her daughter. It was just when she got mad, like fucking Ricky Ricardo. Nashville is great. The Ryman Theater. Fucking 1,500 people seeing a fucking storyteller show that we started in front of 12 people at the Improv Lab. 1,486. I think that was the number. Um, Bert just reminded me. Me and him, we were watching that show. I got back from Southeast Asia. Have I told you I've ever been to Southeast Asia? I got back, went straight to Nashville uh, Wild West Comedy Festival. I did a This Is Not Happening show. Third Man Records. They made a record out of it. They have not released it yet, but someday. They got to locate the fucking footage, but someday. What a great one that was. Um, what was I going to say? Me and Bert and somebody else, Nate Bargatze, were up there watching Larry the Cable Guy. So I told the Ryman audience, I was like, hey, guys, this is a historic venue for me to be playing i mean it, it, dolly parton played here you know johnny cash played here they all played there it's been around since 1890 a church in a in a city where jews weren't probably even allowed i guess i'm assuming and now a jew was playing in one of their dolly parton played here and i told that crowd that that venue meant nothing to me 
I'm not in country music. I barely listen to it. I listen to some. Very little. I like that Zach Brown song about the pond and fishing. Who doesn't like fishing? And then that one about the three chicks who kill that dude. Fucking nice. That's an upbeat fucking murder murder anthem. Dixie chicks are the same as Eminem. True or false? Discuss it at home. Um, but I was like, yeah, this meant nothing to me. Um, uh, Dolly Parton was a terrible comedian, by all accounts. Terrible comedian. Why would I care? But I did see Larry the Cable Guy up here about five years ago. And uh, that was cool. Me, Nate Bargatze, and Burt Kreischer. And this is what Burt Kreischer said to me. Hold on to these moments of things he'll say. He won't be around much longer. You know what I'm saying? You got to cherish what you have while you can. I'm, I'm sick of fucking, you know, worried about what's going to happen in the future. Oh, if you don't have retirement, you're going to have, you're going to be a Walmart salesman. Guys, you're talking about your 70s now. Let's live for today. And we got this guy, Burt Kreischer, around today. Really appreciate that. Ah, immediately your mind goes, oh, I'm going to miss him. But don't, don't do it. Stay in the positive. Got this guy named Burt Kreischer. And he told me he remembered what happened up there. We're all looking at this venue. And uh, Nate Bargatze at the time said, um, no, Burt Kreischer went first. I'm sorry, Burt. I'm messing it up. He's one of our greatest storytellers, you guys. He won't be here forever. It's a debate on how long he won't be here. And how soon he won't be here. But he'll, at some point, he'll be gone forever. So let's cherish him. It could easily be sooner. Um, he said, we were all talking. And uh, Bert goes, I'll never be able to, to play a place like this. And Nate was like, I'll definitely play this someday. And they both have. And I said, uh, fuck this place. <laughs> <laughs> what a great show though <laughs> fucking Soder Sal Volcano Nate Bargatze in the town he owns he owns Nashville comedy um, Shane Gillis Big J it was fucking crazy what a fucking great show the next one's on this coming Monday at the Village Underground it's sold out as fuck but I think there'll probably be like 20 wait, wait list tickets if you want to show up early I don't know, but probably. There usually are some no-shows. All right, so what do we got? So me and my Canna talk. My Canna's a great comic. He fucking killed it all weekend. I don't know, guys. There's something I'm supposed to tell you. Oh, I know. I know. I'm supposed to do an ad. But tell you what. Tell you what. Okay. YouTube users, you can fucking see a, 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 a two-and-a-half-second advertisement from my Patreon. And the rest of you, you're about to hear an ad. Do you ever feel like you're going underwater? Like you're like, uh, 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 your whole sanity's hanging on. Uh, it's more tenuous than the fucking bubbles covering a grown man's cock as he records an intro and ad read on his podcast. A podcast it didn't exist when he was starting. And still, you feel like you're going under, like, oh, no, I can't, I can't, you know, you can't, uh, everything's happening, and it's like, oh, if my dick comes out, they're going to fucking lose, and everything's fucking anxiety and depression and all that shit. Why? Two reasons, money and uh, time and effort. And I guess you got to admit you have a problem. This is for betterhelp.com. Um, okay. Admit you have a problem. I can't help you with that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh uh, money, it's cheaper on betterhelp.com. It's less money. Same thing. They put you with a fucking, you know, therapist. Um, less time. You don't have to go. So, okay. I think we can all understand that. You have limited amount of time. You fucking, you know, oh, I got to take my therapy meeting, but I'm not going to fucking make an appointment and go across town. The traffic alone will come out. And we're all overworked. If only there was a way to do this from the comforts of your bubble bath at home. Still covered. Well, now there is. Betterhelp.com. Pretty much they come to you. I don't know what their policy is on fucking having your dick out under the table or your, or, or your box out. Don't get it munched. Don't like take advantage of it. You know, betterhelp.com. Use promo code Ari. Well, we are quickly running out of 
dick covering, holy dick covering bubbles. And at that point, the introduction will legally have to be over. Um, real quick, you guys. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just like, you'll get it done. I know a lot of you took Zoom meetings in fucking underwear. Obviously. Right? Or from a place. You're like, you know, how many of you? Be real. Be real. How many of you took a Zoom meeting on vacation and pretended like you were working all day? Either skiing, the cabin in general, the woods or something, buddy's house, bachelorette weekend. How many of you did it? Be honest. If you didn't, are you regretting now not having done it? Yeah. For the people who just got COVID now, don't you regret not using it as an excuse like over a year ago? Now that you know you get it again and you didn't get it in that time. So I get the idea of saving an excuse for that moment. But in hindsight, well, you didn't get it again and you didn't get it ever, whatever. You regret not using it as a free excuse to get out of work, right? It's got to be the same for whatever the fuck I was just talking about. Guys, it's great to be on the road doing this fucking Jew hour. It's great to have a fucking killer like Mike Cannon this whole fucking tour. Leading up to the special. I got fucking Murderer's Row. Next week's Reggie Conquest, uh, 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 from, whose ass has been featured heavily on the channel Home Box Office. Caitlin Palufo after that in, uh, well, that Reggie was in Buffalo. Caitlin Palufo after that in Jacksonville. Nope. 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 Louisville, Derby weekend. Big mistake in booking on my part. Then, I don't know. Kansas City's one of those weeks. Anthony DeVito's doing it. And then and then Adrian Apalucci's with me in Jacksonville. That's one of those weeks. And then in fucking Austin. Quick in the cave. And then the special. And after that, Chicago and Minneapolis. Let's do the episode. Right? Okay. I think so. Mike Cannon, everybody. Stay tuned. It was a good episode, I think. It's hard to remember. Listen, let's be honest. This is a real chance doing this in here. And I don't have the time to do it again. I got dinner plans. I'm fitting this in as best I can. I'm still going to give it my all, but sometimes you got to use a new bat. Sometimes you got to get up and back to practice, and I go, I'm going to use a new bat or a new stance. And I'm like, hey, maybe it's going to be fucking awesome, but there's a chance it won't be, and that's a chance we'll all take together. I'm still going to try to hit it out of the park. Guys, I got to finish this. I got to finish this, or I won't be able to do this with one take, which is what I always. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, um, so here's the episode. Me and fucking, we had. We had, I told you what happened. We're trying to return the car. When we get back, I'll tell you about the car, what happened with that, and then let's go. Here we go. Subscribe. Subscribe uh, and go. Start it. Start it. Oh, in plain sight with Mike Cannon. Start it. Start it. This is going to be the most embarrassing podcast I might have ever done. <laughs> I sometimes do these in public, and then I think uh, I'm way too uncomfortable with people staring at me. Yeah. I think it, it adds a nice dynamic, though, because these people are... Truly mortified for us. Mortified. Like, what are they doing? Are they influencers? <laughs> That's a three camera shoot <laughs> in the middle of the American <laughs> Airlines. Just a regular ass Louis airport. Not a lounge. Not a lounge at all. <laughs> you would think, like, if Rogan did this, he'd be like, hey, can I call ahead and get a private wing for myself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I uh, just rent out the Jet Blue quarry? Yeah. And they'd be like, well, that's going to cost a lot of money. He goes, that's not something that I have. <laughs> it's not, a, it's, I don't really say, oh, shit. Did you press record? Oh, you I found did. some change. Yeah, dude. <laughs> a lot of these people wow. pre, you know, preoccupied with heads or tails. Eh, free penny. Red banner day. And I got to say, yeah. you need every cent to accumulate towards the $300 fine you just paid. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so back from the teaser. <laughs> they did not buy our excuse. Of, no. Of, she, didn't seem to call, she didn't seem to say I was lying. No. She just said, this is what's happening. Yeah. She, and she was like, okay. She okay. Technically, she goes. I'll waive the fee. I have the audio. We'll see if it'll work. I put it at the very end. But she goes. I'll waive the one-way fee, which was three hundred bucks, uh -huh. and I'll change it to a one-way reservation, which was like two hundred ninety-seven more dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they saved you a uh, subway fare. They did save me a subway fare, a non-jump subway fare. But like I said, it's kind of an interesting thing to see you try to like gained like you know try to have her empathize with you while you're wearing just a clear pedophile t-shirt <laughs> those are sexist young boys yeah the guy at the breakfast bar this morning was like first of all pouring either pepper or salt on an apple which i've never <laughs> seen in my entire life i guess that's a st <laughs> louis no matter what it is it's like it's wrong it's fucking bonkers and he just he caught your shirt and then <laughs> just <laughs> just tried to zoom punch in focus on it oh my god <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, she was on our, our shuttle. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I, I love playing it. You ever do this where you play a lie, but you like convince yourself that it's true? Yeah. So like you're like, well, wait, what? And I then could, you get mad. Yeah. That's just, how you beat a detector. Is believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And I can do that. I could trick myself into believing a lie like really quickly. Really? Because if it suits me. Yeah. Then I, I'm forced to believe it. And most of my memories, I believe, are probably pretty fabricated as is. So what's the difference? Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, Joe List had this thing. It was like, well, at some point when you're telling stories, you're not remembering the story. You're remembering the retelling of the story. Yeah. So you really have lost any sort of like, is this real or not? That's right. Yeah. I have, a few times. I have a story on my first album about doing mushrooms with this guy who had like a full blown freak out. He, yeah. he took six grams, like lost his yeah, mind. It was too much. It was fun to watch. But <laughs> the whole story now is the bit I told. I don't know, like, I don't remember some of the small little nuances that were, that even made the story better, but you couldn't include on stage because it just lost people's attention. Interesting. You know, but. Because it, they'd be like, this is boring. Yeah, it's right. just like, we don't need, we, we don't, we don't need. sister was, I had a crush on a sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or the books you were reading, right. like, while on Mushrooms, the artist's name, like, that all That is the, weird about Mushroom stories. You're like, and this was so interesting. It's like, just to you, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's like a dream. There was some comic, I forget her name. I never knew her name, but she was a, a young like comic at the improv. Mm. Yeah, this one's going to die. Yeah, this one too. It's got one bar. That's a solid bar, though. This is a okay. tiny little bar. Oh, yeah, you got a baby um, bar. Well, we'll see. Um, she had a joke. She goes, when, you pay, when people tell you about their dream, it's the most uninteresting thing in the world. Yes. Except when they go, but you were in it. And they go, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. I was in it? What was I doing? Yeah. <laughs> in this yeah. made up world, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's also the easiest, and I don't know if this still works. It probably doesn't because the yeah. last time I hit on a girl was in like 78. Yeah. But doing, <laughs> but saying I had a dream about you. Wow. That was my instant in in like high school. A little bit of college, but I think I even aged out of it at that point. But high school is big. Yeah, I had a dream about it. You want to hear a great pickup line? You have to do it when you're like it, around 30, 30 to 40. Mm. Any girl from your high school that has been divorced. So now she's like, "What? I want my youth back. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, am I attracted? She goes, you know, I always had a crush on you in high school. Oh, God, yeah. Because it doesn't do anything. It's like, it's like, yeah, it was half our life ago. Mm -hmm. We're 32, it was 16. Like, yeah. But they still, they remember like, yeah, I was attractive once. Yeah. And you're bringing me there. <laughs> and it's easy to move on from if they have no interest. Right, if they have no interest. It's like, oh, yeah, well, we had a crush on lots of people. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm happily, <laughs> we all I'm did. All right, no, I would never. Yeah, <laughs> I would never leave my wife for you. That's... Um, that's you're, no, you no, no, I wasn't either. Yeah. Do you have a ton of friends that have gotten divorced? I guess so. Not a ton. I have Not some that ton. should and that have been threatening and it divorce. hasn't panned out. Like yeah. it just didn't work. Yeah, and all your friends are like, yeah, do it already. Yeah. Get a divorce. Well, especially when they bring you into the conflict and they're like, man, it's time. I think it's time to step away. Like, I, you know, we helped one of my buddies look for lawyers. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. And it just like, it never materialized. And none of us have spoken about it since. So it's the ultimate, like. It's all, it's there. I guess we're pretending that What's never happened. What's friend bitching about their girlfriend saying, I'm breaking up, fuck her. And you commiserate, like, yeah, fuck, dude, she sucked. Whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, we're back together. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, come on. <laughs> like, we can't look at you we can't ever talk to you she, you can't bring her around here anymore yeah that's why I, I always tread lightly on my commentary about the person where i'm always just more positive about what their life is going to be post breakup yeah. than i am about like fuck that bitch she sucked i never liked her that's smart yeah that's it's smart. always so just fun. like it's you like dude late. you're drop you, you're yeah. gonna be this is a new you're starting your life because worst case scenario the girlfriend's like i heard you said he was gonna fuck a lot and right like yeah i mean i was trying to like yeah comfort i didn't say you were a bitch and i thought it though <laughs> And he will, but I've told my friends' <laughs> wives that too, where they're like, you know, we've joked around about that stuff, and they're like, what do you mean he could fuck? And I'm like, isn't that how he got you? Isn't that literally what you were attracted to? The yeah. fact that he looked like a virile man? Uh -huh. Why are you upset? <laughs> Is that Norman's I don't want to say Norman's joke, <laughs> but uh, whatever. Um, it's similar to the Patrice thing of like where he goes fishing, you catch a fish, and then you usually throw it back, but then his girl jumped back on the boat. And then after a while, <laughs> they, after a while, she's like, why do you still have a boat? <laughs> like, yeah. get like mad at the I thing that here. got her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're pissed about this world. <laughs> it's such it's a like good... We met at swingers parties. <laughs> yeah. We met at Coke swingers parties. That's mm -hmm. the craziest thing when your friends are like Coke heads and then they meet that and now they're like, parents, you know who I'm talking about. You know I'm talking about you. It's cool. He still does coke. Yeah. But like, um, 
Yeah, it's weird. It's like, are you a mother? <laughs> You're yeah. a fiend. Yeah, I still know. I mean, I have some friends that still party. Really? With kid, like they don't party with their children, but they'll like cut it up and do some pretty reckless shit. And I'm wow. just like, man, the last thing I want to do. This is enough to keep me away from coke forever. Yeah. Is I just don't want my son to learn that I died from coke, died even if it's coke. a fuck up. Died from coke would be bad. It's always a fuck up. What it's always an accident. Like, he couldn't handle his drugs. Yeah, he's a pussy. Not even did drugs. <laughs> couldn't handle them. What? <laughs> oh yeah, we're all testing for fentanyl back then. But Mike was just like, man, I'm sure this is good. And then he died. What a fucking idiot. Yeah. That's why I always have, I don't, I don't have like a testing kit, but I do have Sagalo. So he, <laughs> that's, like, just, that's a festival tester. Yeah, dude. We, uh, we Try got this. that, we yeah. got that Mexican Klonopin. He took it 40 minutes later. I saw that he was still breathing. Where I took this? it. This was in Mexico. On the cruise? On the cruise. Yeah. We bought it at the Pharmacia with an F. Yeah, and uh, they we we asked yeah, the lady. Pharmacia. We were like, "Is there like how do we know that there's no fentanyl?" And she goes, "I don't know." She literally said, "I don't know." From a pharmacy, it's right. From, if you get but a, it, on a man-made a island, it's still a pharmacy though. Yeah, it's not a street dealer. Although it could be. <laughs> it, there was that, that story in China. They had a, a, an an uh, an Apple store, mm -hmm. and you know the glass steps. Yeah, yeah. You go out there. It fell through. Oh shit! And someone was there, and they sued. They sued Apple, and Apple's like, "Hey, that's not our store." They're like, no, it's an episode. Like, no, they just replicated our store. That's a knockoff store. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry you fell, and I'm sorry wow. they made it seem like us, but that's just a Chinese knockoff, like no copyright laws country. Yeah, so maybe the <laughs> pharmacy is like, yeah, it's just a dealer. Who bought it. <laughs> we just put a yeah. green cross on the wall, and yeah. you guys bought it. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So, but Brendan took that. He also has been a. Uh, Listen, a if you got to lose one of you guys, lose Brendan. <laughs> you got the bigger upside. You got the longer life for sure. I have a kid. You have a kid. You're too. We can't lose you, Mike. Yeah. We can't lose you, <laughs> Brendan. Like it was. You know, we'll have a memorial. We will, and it'll be good. He'll be. He's also like a more formidable body to withstand poison. Because yeah. he's so fat. Yeah, he's so fat. <laughs> he's lost weight and now he's just fat. Yeah. <laughs> now he's, he's not even comically fat now. Now it's sad fat. Yeah. Settle I'm up. just kidding, Brendan. I love you so much. Yeah, I know. We just want to We don't want to have you here for five more years instead of three. <laughs> um, hey, how was that fucking ordeal at the TSA? That was fun. So it turns out that I have been pre-checked for the last eight years and have had no idea. I signed up <laughs> at Yankee Stadium like eight years ago, blacked out just to get through the line just quicker. Get the like, you want to go through, bypass the line? You're like, yes. Yeah, I'll give my credit get, card, I'll whatever my, you want. My, my uh, thumbprints, whatever. It, may, it, it just dawned on me when you were like, what, did they keep charging you? And I was like... Have they just yeah, been maybe. charging me this entire time? Uh -huh. I had no clue, but that's exactly what's I'm been starting happening. I'm billboards and people are like, we'll clean up your automatic like deposits, like your automatic charges. That's like, a good business. Like, I saved 300 bucks a month. I'm no just like, shit. shit. I didn't know. Thank you, Patreon Damn. subscribers who are no longer with me. You are still with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and your support means everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was like there was one old man working security for TSA, Clear, and, and TSA Pre. Mm-hmm. And just like, fuck, we want to do this podcast. And we're like, do you feel like you have, because I have it because I'm from there, but like, do you feel like you have the New York pace now ingrained in your body? Like, does that infuriate yeah, you move, to the level? Move, yeah. Move. <laughs> After some time, I can get back there. Like, yeah. two days at the beach, three days maybe. Then I'm like, okay, I think I'm relaxed. Again. It takes me seven. It seven. takes me a full week. Yeah. Because I, I remember in Hawaii. Look at that. Look up there. Like if you're in that in that scene yeah. on the TV. Oh, it's gone. Now. Dude, in, in Hawaii. I went to Hawaii for 11 days. Yeah. By the seventh day, I lucid and dreamed for player. the rest. Yeah, that looks like kind of Andre Drummond. That's what I was going to say, Andre Yeah, Drummond. but I don't think it is. <coughs> he was just not flying commercial. No, but um, or maybe he is a bench player. <laughs> maybe. But um, that's right. He uh, what was I talking about? Hawaii. Oh Hawaii. yeah. So the seventh day, I was finally like non panicky, and then I lucid dreamed for four days straight. And then when I got home, I lucid dreamed for six months, six months, not every single night, but like pretty regularly. Really? And then from what? From relaxing? from Hawaii? From just being in Chill? that atmosphere? Yeah. Wow. It like it took seven full days to douche New York out of my system, and then and it then kind it of last. Out? Yeah, yeah. Hawaii kind of had a big <laughs> impact on me. Damn. Yeah, I got to an island in Cambodia, and I remember going like, and from traveling, it was the first time where I was like, <laughs> yep. I don't have to do anything, and I'm not headed to the next place. Yeah, I wasn't, but it was still like the point here is to chill. Yeah, and it would it was like three days, even there, 
even after already traveling for mm. two months of like oh relax yeah 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 it takes a lot yeah, of I'm, like, I'm thinking i'm gonna get a daiquiri maybe in a couple hours that's what that's what helps it is like because they also when i was drinking back then i would like i got off the plane in hawaii and i let it rip and i like we instantly went to a beach we camped out overnight we were with my wife's friend's friend so they like showed us all of hawaii like this one wow, cool. this one separated beach and we camped it we had a tent on it it was wow. unbelievable so but we raged immediately so then i'm up the next morning at like 6 a.m <laughs> new york time still panicking so it took a while to like get all of that even the post booze yeah. anxiety out it's just like there's something to be able to like i'm gonna go to the lounge chair and i'm gonna read mm -hmm. sit kind of stare how long are you gonna stare for like it doesn't matter yeah i'm just gonna stare at the ocean yeah it's hard to get in that vibe but it's so relaxing i had that in tulum yeah. which is yeah the downtown brooklyn of mexico uh -huh. and uh it's just constant white white girls running around buying shirts but uh really? yeah, yeah okay, and yeah. it was very relaxing like really serene that's a scene and then I found out, uh, I found out as if he was a close friend, but it did bum me out. Mac Miller died, like, while I was there. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, man, he's like, he's one of my favorite rappers. Like, I really yeah. liked him. He's young as shit. He has a drug problem. He's depressed. It, like, reminded me of myself. So I'm immediately, like, narcissistically <laughs> attaching myself to it. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, I died, kind of. We were on Mushrooms when Robert Williams died in this, in this, oh, my we God. went to this house for Shroom Fest in, um, in um, Joshua Tree, outside Joshua Tree, mm. great, where you could like hike right up the place and then all the rocks. And we're just tripping out like daytime. And um, someone's like, Robin Williams died, committed suicide. And I remember looking at my buddy Matt Edgar and we're like, we'll deal with this later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, look at this wing. Uh -huh. like, this is not, let's just not let it in yet. I found out he died on the tail end of a two week commercial shoot across the country. You like, were? I was for Trulia, that home rental app or whatever. We went to 11 cities in four weeks, or no, in, in two weeks and operating on zero sleep whatsoever. It's this entire thing. I'm drinking like a two, my second bottle of wine on the Acela train headed yeah. from Boston to DC. <laughs> and I, I saw that and just burst into hysterics mostly really? because I was just like tired, exhausted, you know, just worn down, drunk. I had like, like watch a movie on a plane cry. Yeah. Like I'd like, kind of like, exactly. what? Why am I so emotional? It meant something completely different. It was like not all Robin at all. Yeah. But you um, knew him, right? No, I met him once uh, going to meltdown. I didn't even meet him. It yeah. Was like held the door open for him. And then I was like, oh, I think it was Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know him at all. And also, like, we had as a standard when I started, like, that guy steals jokes. Yeah. So it was like, and it was so backed up from the old guys at the comedy store. Like, there was one guy, who, like, he stole my whole act. Where it's like, all right, we'll write another act. Right. It's been 35 years. <laughs> you got to write another hour. You can't You can't have this. I, I get it. You're victimized, but you can't have this be yeah. defined you But forever. that's kind of a credit. It is. At that point. And people go, you know, that's, that guy yeah. stole, you know, Rob Williams stole his act. It is a credit, but it's like, don't want to define you. But, like, um, still, it's not your fault. But, like, uh, all the other guys, like. We're good. But you're good, yeah. Where are you? You're. 224. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they're not going yet. Yeah, you're fine. I mean, um, oh, all the old guys were like, yeah, you would, like, riff or something, do a joke. Like, that's funny. They would do it on Tonight Show, like, the next night. Oof. And he'd say, like. I'm riffing so much, I can't tell where it comes from. But people are like, we don't really believe, like, I don't know. I've done it where you say something and then you're like, oh shit, that's somebody else's joke. Yeah. Right then. Sometimes yeah. you apologize. Sometimes you're like, I'll just won't do that ever again. Right. But yeah. Like, I, he did it all the time. Like, you, you, that was willful ignorance. I, yeah. I think it was, that's exactly what it was. I think it's a little bit of both. Like, he probably absorbed some shit. But then part of him also trust fall and didn't give a shit about hurting anybody. So he was just like, yeah, like I'm I'm gonna use everything. That's like um um yeah, so like um Atel, he he goes crazy asking like, All right, have you ever heard this joke before? It's mm. like a birthday hat for a fucking dog. I'm like, No, he's like, it's a a birthday birthday hat for I don't know, so whatever. <laughs> and then I'm like, No, no and he's like, Nothing he's like I'm I'm picturing like a door guy at the store and I was like, No. You know, uh -huh. I would just moved to New York. He goes and then he goes, Can you call a door guy and ask him? And I was like yeah okay and i called the door and i'm like Do you, have you heard this joke anybody else I'm holy like, no. shit like, okay so that guy goes out of his way to check yeah now the other people that you've heard of that steal jokes i think they're just like the opposite like it might not be fully like i'm taking that joke but it's like 
I'm not even questioning where it came from. Yeah, it's better to just feign ignorance and just be like, well, that's clearly mine. I came yeah. up with it. I just thought it. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's like, okay. I mean, we've all done it. We've had a bit and you're like, that came out too formed. Yeah. I, I said Greg Giraldo's uh, name on stage once because I just like, like, that I, like I literally Giraldo. came out with a thing and I was like, that was verbatim a Greg Giraldo bit. I was like, that's crazy. I'm sorry. That just came out in the moment and uh, I just seemingly borrowed his shit. Yeah. 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 It's weird. It or, happens. It yeah. happened more in the beginning because I was more obsessively watching stand up. Like now, it, I don't watch as much. Whenever a tell would come into the store, rarely, but it would come in. The next two months, I would talk like a tell. Yeah. Wow. Don't, I, don't, I can't even do it anymore. But my friends like You're doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's one of those things where sometimes it's people, have, it's it's a Hedberg, a tell, like they Brody have that cadence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I had to have my friend yell at me when I start talking like Brody. <laughs> I was like, just interrupt me at the store. Just interrupt me. I just go, on hey, stage. Brody. Yeah. No like, shit. Oh, thank you. It was like a problem. That's so it was funny. A Madrigal had a lot too. People talked about like Madrigal, which yeah. is unique, and and I mean the same reason Madonna was like took a British accent. Yeah, it was like I don't know, it's cool. I'm around it these. Sounds people. awesome. Yeah, it sounds awesome. <laughs> I mean, I I trashed Madonna for that, and then also I am 100 percent guilty of the same thing because when I played oh, basketball, uh-huh. dude, my my first two years of college were like so embarrassing. When I came home, and my friends were like. Who are you, dude? Like, yeah. what is this new affect? Your whole, your whole uh, outfit. Like, yeah. this what? sucks. Dude, I, yeah, it's so funny. I came <laughs> home to, uh, to to Maryland and I was going out to a bar mm. um, with my friends, and I took off my my like two hip fucking jacket. You know, one of those like Guido jackets. Yeah. Um, and then I had a wristband on. It was a multicolored wristband. Oh, no. I was like skater chic. <laughs> and my friends were like. I'm just staring and I'm like, what? Like, you're going to play tennis? I'm like, dude, this, I'm fucking way cool. And you're like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> and they still had their backwards baseball cap with their polo yeah. shirts because they're slumming it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing is I couldn't, my friends were making fun of me, so I didn't even take it serious because I'm like, you're wearing fucking affliction, dude. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, you suck. Yeah, you, you stink. Suck. <laughs> oh, look at you. Uh, a real yeah. New York Jew. He's probably on our flight. Yeah. On my flight. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Um, it's got a little microphone cover. Yeah. Hey, let's uh, let's do, instead. I usually do these as a drop in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. But let's just do dates. Yeah. So it'll be out on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, May eighteenth is my Mike big Cannon, one. Everybody. My Canon. May eighteenth is what? Uh, my special is dropping on YouTube called May eighteenth. May eighteenth. Shit! I wish I could save this till then. That's perfectly fine. But uh, Mike Cannon comedy on YouTube. I'll post about it's it. It's called White Privilege Homeless. Uh, that's coming out May eighteenth, and then my dates are at mikecannoncomedy.com. I'm going to be at. Uh, I'm going to be, you said Tuesday, I'll be in Richmond, Virginia this weekend then. And then the next weekend I'll be in uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Mike Cannon Comedy? MikeCannonComedy.com. With two N's. So the TSA, the clear lady could not spell. She Cannon. spelled it cannot. Cannot. She said, is it C-A-N-N-O-T? And no, the, her other lady goes, it's Cannon. <laughs> She's like, oh, right, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, she was baffled. And then the, when the, the, they open up two more lines. So then the line is like, we're like, we're not going to be out of time to do this. And then the line just started moving. We're like, fuck, we'd already be through. <laughs> fuck. We have, now we can't be like, lady, goodbye. And then don't worry, I have to do it again. So I have oh, to yeah. get out of here, go through additional security at Delta. You can't go, th- go from here to, no, bad claim, A gates. You can get there. Oh, okay. You can get there. Oh, great. It's all connected. It's a terminal. That's, all right, that's good. You have the extra hour. Yeah. I intentionally flew Mike on a later flight so that he, I could have the extra hour. Um, <laughs> so I'd have to so hang. Say, yeah, could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'd rather be alone. Can you just wait. Um, I got to say, man, I love your crowd. They're, I, a, good I, comedy crowd, they're right? a good comedy crowd. They're hysterical after because they are, <laughs> you know, each person, you could tell which part of your personality they latch on to, whether it's like the people that are super into art and experimental art you know and stuff like that and they're just wanting to see the process or it's the people that are like shroom fest and shroom fest only and i love this <laughs> yeah, yeah. and i'm on heavy dose of dmt in the front row <laughs> to that guy who was like after was like oh i didn't know i'd see you in the parking lot he goes i gotta i gotta it's a, to mike he was like i got a bump for you and i got a mushroom for you Ari. and i was like all right now we're good on both, both yeah, fronts. Yeah, just cool, Jay and go home um <laughs> It's 1.30 a.m. post two shows. It's like the one thing I want to My do right now is a blast. My friend on me, 
and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I want to <laughs> start my night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, nah, dude. I, it's like that's when you know you're a responsible drug addict. You're like, yeah, I'll take everything, but what time is it? Yeah, yeah I have stuff yeah, to this do. This is an eight p.m. thing, <laughs> right before sunset. Not not at two a.m. Are you crazy? Uh-huh. Yeah, I got a meeting. I'm I have say. kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got Ari's dates are. I got my special uh, June eleventh and twelfth in New York City. In Brooklyn, New York, get Hell tickets yeah. at AriShafir.com. The twelfth will be the last time I ever do that hour, so that's that'll be a good one on this. The late it's Sunday. fucking great. Oh, it's thanks. really great. Saw it. Yeah. Um, thanks. Yeah. And then I got this weekend Buffalo at Helium. Uh, the weekend after that Jacksonville uh, with Adrian Appalucci will be with me, and then nice. um, Louisville um, with Caitlin Palufo, Kansas City, and and a residency in Austin the last weekend of May. Anyway, oh, nice. Are you just doing Shirt. new? No, I'm just going to do that um, Jew hour for like six days. Oh, sick. Yeah. As the leading up the to cave. the thing? Yeah. Nice. Just so I have a bunch of runs that I'll take the weekend off before that. And then the next tour with a different hour starts uh, June 17th, 18th in Minneapolis and Chicago. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. Yeah. But so I already have that hour. So it's like. But it, so it's banked material that you yeah. have. It's also. So I was doing all this Jew shit. And then it was like, well, what if I saw somebody sh- like eating their own shit on my friend's stoop I'm, right, like, right. I'm not gonna not do a bit about that yeah. it doesn't go in the hour but like for a week i'm gonna be talking about that so all this like extra stuff built up yeah and so then and then this last year i'm like was working on all that stuff so it was just like that's great but how do you shift your mind to that because once i'm like locked into an hour it it kind of takes a moment for me to get my brain out of that yeah routine. so i had this i don't know i don't know it was so sort of done i had so i did it in san antonio i did the jew hour mm. sarah tolomash was opening for me and so I started booking a bunch of places I hadn't been. I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it ever an hour where I already was. Yeah. So I'm like, it's got to be new material. Um, a joke here, or there, fine, but mostly new material. Yeah. And so, um, and so, um, he's gonna try to come sit next to us. Now she turned around. So anyway, San Antonio, I did it, and somebody's like, oh, it went fine, went well. And then this is show one. And then, um, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> trying to multitask. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, it's like airport Wayne's World. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and then somebody's like, "Yeah, it was great." When the door guy's like, I, "Yeah, you did that last time you were here," and I was like, "Wait, did I?" And oh, like, really? Yeah, I think you were in San Jose. I was like, "Fuck," because it's like it was a three year tour. I forgot right. where I played, and I'm sure it's tweaked and gotten better or something. But I'm like, did I? And he's like, "Yeah, like, yes." <laughs> and then I think it was just a Thursday show. And then Friday, I was like, "Well, let me." Then I can't do that anymore. Yeah. So I just had to go back to the old house. So you like and, lost yeah. a whole weekend of work. I know. And then the door guy was like, wait, you just sw- did an entirely new hour? Show to show? <laughs> and I was like, it's not as cool as you think. But yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, that is pretty cool, though, because that's like Jenny shit. Like Richard Jenny used to do that where he'd swap hours. Brian Regan does Regan. that where he swaps the hours. I heard in, in D.C. was they told Regan somebody came up to the a meet and greet after mm. the show, the, the merch line. I go, that was great. Me and my wife always come see you. We're actually going to come see the next show, too, because we were such fans. And he was like. And I always go, go home. Right. But he was like, okay. And he just did a whole new hour for those two people Jesus. in a sold out show. Yeah, yeah. I feel that too, though, because anytime that I go and there's people like, you know, some of the people that saw that came to see you obviously know me from yeah. on, on a smaller level. But I was. Yeah, you, know, you had some like, we recognize you claps before you went on. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I, but I made sure to mention like, or not mention, I was just doing the thing that I just taped because nobody's seen it yet. Because I was like, all the other stuff. Just oh, because there's like people. four people yeah, in yeah. the crowd, yeah, whatever. It's like, oh, I guess I can't do that. Yeah, Nate said he would he would do uh, he would do this um, thing where um, it's okay, it gives it reality. Yeah, um, he finished like he. She's did also half right. Hour. She's right. She's yeah. right to walk through. Um, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, why am I getting upset? <laughs> like, hey, just keep going. Don't disrupt us. This is a closed set, bitch. Oh, we got to talk about that free speech um, thing. Oh yeah. But what Nate said, he goes, he did his. Netflix half hour or whatever and mm. then he started doing getting bonuses and stuff like that it was the first one in the first half hour run and then he goes so okay so I'll do 40 and then he goes hey guys just so you know so now or he said up top I think I'm gonna do some new material but then it's like I don't have a new hour so don't be blogging and saying oh Nate did the old stuff I'm telling you now <laughs> you're gonna get some of the old stuff yeah yeah and so now he does that like, it's like 40 he goes okay that's all my new stuff now let me hit you with some of the old things. That's cool, though. Yeah, and they're like, sweet, sweet. Because they yeah. also want to hear it, but they don't want to feel betrayed. Well, that's like, I don't know if that's a clean 
comedy thing. But like that's with Gaffigan too. Is like they're never sick of the hot pocket. They're bit. never sick of the they hot pocket. They want to hear it like that. Like it's a greatest hit. Did I tell you what what I saw? Him? No. I think at the Paramount in in um in um Austin. Mm -hmm. I think it's for a festival. I think. And uh, I also saw Bill Burr there with with um. Verzi opening for him, and mm -hmm. I was sitting next to the guy who booked Montreal, Robbie, yeah. back then. And we were just like, we're friends, you know? So we're like sitting there watching, and Verzi murdered. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, with a packed, you know, 1500 seat yeah. room, and murdered. And you just see him go, like, what's this guy's name? Like, Paul Verzi? And he's like, oh. And it was like, he got the call the next day. <laughs> nice. He was like, hey, we want you to do new faces. Oh, that's great. It was the best situation to showcase instead of fucking eight people at the yeah. fucking New York Comedy Club with nobody there. Dude, I have, uh, like, I auditioned for New Faces eight times, six callbacks. Damn. <laughs> never, got it. never got it. There were also those years where I was like half offering my wife to, <laughs> to Jeff. Like I was like, dude, guys, whatever. Take I have whatever some momentum. To. Get yeah. me in there, please, <laughs> for the love of God. And they told me next year three times. Oh. They're like, dude, next year, three separate times. And I was like, all right, at this point, look at my hair. I'm not getting <laughs> it's it. It's over. Yeah. They told me I was too old. They're like, you're 36, you're too old. And then they booked Duncan that year at 36 and Brendan Walsh the next year at 36. <laughs> That's what I was like. Can you just tell me I'm not cool? Yeah. Can you just tell me you think I'm hacky or too dirty? It's fine. Yeah. I wonder what that is though, because that I I have I we're not really similar, but I have suffered similar fate in you terms of Comedy like Central face. and yeah. and Montreal. Dude, some it's a lot of it's just that's the polar bear we saw. Oh yeah, shit. The zoo we saw him that just showed underwater. That's the winter, dude. It was fucking huge. It was huge. There underwater. It wasn't that much smaller than the hippos. Oh. It was not that much smaller than the hippos. It's wild yeah. to be that close. Yeah, the hippo actually, the I think. The head was like bigger than that kid that was in front of the window. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, wait, what were we just saying? Uh, my, uh, Comedy Central, oh, my, Montreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it just boils down to who's cool. Right. And who do they want to be around? And if you don't have the stink of cool on you or the it factor, the it factor is either super attractive yeah. or a little brotherly. Yeah. So like Gerard had that Yeah. Uh, early on. Schumer had that. People like want to look out for them. Schumer yeah. wasn't banking on like, I'm so hot, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and now that was Gerard. It was just like, I want to look out for those people. So people really would take them under their wings. Yeah. And want Do you know you're them. the first person to ask me to open for them? Really? Like the first, I used to open for Chris when he first started headlining, but just because we were buddies for the most part. Oh. But I think I have that face cool, like, where people are yeah, just like, uh, covered, he right? seems like, yeah, you seem like you're good. <laughs> like, <Wow>. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I only ask because I don't respect you. Yeah. So I figured you'd be available. And I appreciate that lack of respect. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Really? And I canceled Soul Joel's for this. Wow. Damn. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I mean, I have no problem because it actually it forced me and to get like what's her name? Who's like the, everyone wants her to open? Who's that? A Rosebud. Rosebud. Yeah. She just has that yeah, thing yeah. of like get her, get her, get yeah. her. And it's like who gets these? Yeah. The, not it's not even hype. It's just the the stamp on you. Like Julia Roberts, like Fireman told me this. She's not hot. Mm -hmm. Nobody jerks off to Julia Roberts. Right. But maybe back in the day, she but... lights up a room with her smile. Yes. And so that's her it factor. Yeah. And then the chick from Transformers. Yes. She's just hot. Yeah. So she has the it factor on hotness. Julia Roberts, I think everybody thinks they could have sex with her. They see her and she's like attainable, super yeah. hot, like That's when Natasha, girl next door. Natasha was that. It was yeah. like she had this laugh that made you feel like you were uh, welcomed mm -hmm. and like whatever. And, and it, part of it. And she was just like super cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, and But not like standoffishly like hot. Right. But like quite attractive but like there was something in your mind like in a different world <laughs> if i played all my cards right i could get that yeah, yeah. you see like what's it megan fox and you're like there's no world where no I world there's none no you have to be like brian austin green who was famous when she was a kid was in there with her mind <laughs> yeah it's saving my can not my canon uh, uh the other canon nick dated. nick canon yeah yeah dated what's her name because even though she was Mariah an Carey. old fucking hag yeah uh but it's like no i remember her from before oh yeah i mean i would i would leave my wife for Uma Thurman now. and she's yeah. 65 yeah. or whatever yeah. the hell she exactly. is or why you'll fuck a chick that you fucked 10 years ago and now mm -hmm. they're like a mother of two you're <laughs> yeah. like ah, I remember I remember <laughs> I don't know something's in there there's also so many that I gave maybe the worst night of their life to that I'd like a mulligan on <laughs> where it's yeah. like you know those people where you're like man I really I just are you done Interesting. it's blinking it is blinking yeah, I'm gonna stop it and start it okay but or it's just run it yeah, I think you just run it out. And I think this is one of those things where the podcast just kind of ends. It just kind of ends. Yeah. Yeah. 
We had those two minutes ahead of time, and I'll do an intro outro. <laughs> I wish you guys knew the level of stress it took to get. It was very these 40 stressful. minutes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it really was. <laughs> yeah. I'm pouring sweat. I got six miles to walk to the Delta terminal. It's uh, it's exciting. Did and it's pouring, pouring rain, so hopefully my flight even takes off. Wow. Oh, my God. I hope I get out just in time. You get delayed. <laughs> it would be fucking epic. Dude, I just am forced to fucking stay here for another night. Yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, I don't see that not happening. Who do you think is it? Like, why is there an Escalade on the tarmac? Like, is that, is that Nelly or the St. Lunatics? That's got to be somebody. Like, that's not an official airport vehicle. Uh, no, it's not. So how do we go? Do you want to share? <laughs> oh, plug my podcast? Here's the scenario. Me, Brendan Sagalo, aforementioned Chubber, and uh, Mike Feeney. We do a hypothetical-based podcast. We do what-if scenarios, all that fun stuff. You talk to your fellas. Like what? Like, uh, like would you rather... Uh, have Ari's asshole or a baboon's and then discuss the merits of each. It's tough because yours, yours spurts out in a very specific area. It's not all red, but, uh, but it almost looks correct in context. If it were all red, you know what I mean? Like it's not just predator, <laughs> predator phalanges hanging out of a human. Yeah, ass. It's not a great asshole. It's specific to some, because if it, also you'd have to catch them up, right? And be like, Oh, just so you guys know, that's a horrible asshole. <laughs> um, um, yeah, check out his podcast, everybody. Yeah, it's fun. What was I going to say? Oh, let's talk about that free speech thing down there. What was that? That looked like looked a like guy. A witness. Yeah, yeah. But it was a it was a sanctioned thing. Like, yeah, what like, what are like those called? Kiosk. Kiosk. Yes. It wasn't. It wasn't like. Um, I got my shirt yesterday, that Bud Light shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm a kiosk in Wheaton Plaza like 28 years ago. Like, <laughs> a long time ago, maybe even longer. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, it wasn't like, you know how they set up a little booth of their own? Right. And you're like, how are they here? But like, no one's chasing them out because they're like religious ish. Yeah. This wasn't that. This had an official, like, it said free speech. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of think now that I'm, it, because the, the placard didn't necessarily look like that like it didn't look like it was a part of the construction so he maybe brought he brought his own stuck it on he sees a vacant it was like kiosk. it was like a big it was like a f two feet long yeah and like half a foot wide with like a real thick stamp on it but it's one of those things like you ever see the, the like yeah, but vote how did for get that kiosk it, I, that was already there that just kiosk, go that kiosk itself was like that yeah yeah it so, was like an official so that one's empty he so just, just stood there it, wow I think that's what happened because do you know why you ever see like the vote for Trump or whatever Biden placards that they yeah. put in the front yard and they look so official and you're like, wow, that is I don't know how you could even get that. And then your friend runs for like town council and they have one and you're like, oh, you could just get those made. Get yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Wait, buddy, want to get you know those like historical things. Mm -hmm. It goes up like, oh, this, that'd be cool. Down and up, yeah. You know, and you'll pass them in Providence. I mm -hmm. think we passed one. Or maybe that was Nashville. They have a lot in my town. They have a lot of your town. Yeah. yeah. On the East Coast, because it's like this is all. Civil War, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, the one was like so and so record. Johnny Cash recorded this. Used to be the home of the of the studio, whatever. It's mm. no longer there. It's a fucking mattress discounters. But like you know, whatever. My friend was like, "You can just make one of those." Yeah, and he goes, "I just want it in my front lawn, and you could, no one will ever take it down, <laughs> and they'll just just go like you know." Um, he goes, you don't want to go too high, like Harriet Tubman. This is part of her, right. you know, underground. Like, you don't play with that. <laughs> but you go like, you go like, who's like the third president? Like Aaron Burr. Sure. Uh, is that his name? I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, Aaron Burr once stayed here when he was going to talk to the Continental Congress. That's whatever. awesome. Um, and this boarding house was once here. Yeah, and then people are like, oh, and he goes, no. <laughs> but there's no way to cross check. That's awesome that he thought to attach it to real historical figures. Because my first instinct would be like, make one up about your family or something. Right. Interesting. Oh, right, right, right. But like that, Bill I Cannon think that's better. Stayed here as a, yeah. <laughs> Bill Cannon, yeah, my, my, cop, my former cop, now comedian uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, Bill Cannon. Still good. Do have to piss again? Yeah, me too. Damn. What's your clock say? 36. Um, you guys got a Patreon too? Yeah, we do. Patreon.com slash scenario pod. Uh, we do a ton of bonus stuff. We have a bonus. And that's it, just like, what's the scenario? Like, that's just the what ifs? 
Here's the scenario. Yeah, the scenario. we did what's that was our first name, and then uh, legally we were, <laughs> weren't allowed to do it because of Tribe Called Quest. Uh, and uh, so here's the scenario: the Tribe Called Copyright Laws. Uh huh. And that's the one that's like crowdsourced in the sense that like they our Patreon submits the question, so they basically build the episode similar to Are You Garbage? What's it called again? Not here's the here's, here's the scenario. scenario. And and yeah, we gotta we gotta get you on. Yeah, I'll get on that. I, I like fun ones. I just see Steve Burns, and he was like. He just shows crazy old clips of stand up and you just comment on it. Oh, that's awesome. Like, shitty ones. And like, this is just fun. That's a great, like, yeah. I'll do this anytime I'm in Nashville. We just had the Are You Garbage guys on. And it's just, it's pure fun because what it becomes is like, listen, answer the internet exists. All these hypothetical stuff exists. It's not new, but yeah. it is new in terms of our dynamic and guests because it becomes a debate show between people that know each other. So we're attacking each other personally oh, based on you your stance that. on of nothing. You do. I can lick his asshole, then it's fun because you don't have a sense of taste. You we trash food <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah that's fun that's yeah. fun i do that with my patreon mm -hmm. are you sure patreon where they just write in like questions on a specific either general or sex stuff or yeah there's like four different ones or travel stuff or like law like getting arrested shit and then i'll just read them and comment with a guest or myself that's a good idea yeah it's just fun it's easy yeah. audio and then our our bonus Patreon because people are like we miss Irish goodbye like that was Feeny and I's pod, mm -hmm. and so we just do basically Irish, Irish goodbye. goodbye. No, no, we just with Saglo we just tell stories. So now it's the three of us basically and doing Irish, Irish goodbye, goodbye and it's called, it's called blunts with the boys because we smoke and then just do it like You're it's a just a guy, hang. Huh? I love blunts, dude. It sucks. I mean, I'll go with you. You wouldn't even like let's get papers, and yeah. I'm like, listen. I'll you're a blunt, so I'm like, I'll, I don't normally do it, but I'm like, I'll, I'll be willing to. I'm yeah. against them. Why does I, it suck? Because it's definitely not good for you. It takes away every medicinal po property of you're marijuana. Some tobacco. Yeah, I, it's because I it used in. to smoke cigarettes. It's it's a hundred percent. Like I've I used to think like, oh, I'm totally off tobacco, blah blah blah, and I'm smoking blunts every single day. Is it also because you um, is that plane deboarding? Nope. Want to nope. blow a black guy? No, uh, they might be going. Yeah. Um, are are they? Um, is it because you used to hang out with black people? Is because probably is a black thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also a suburban. It's a suburban weed thing. Like suburban you get five, weed. you get five on a blunt, dude. Four of your friends, and you put five. You get a gram for twenty bucks. You fill up the blunt. You go for a ride. It does get you fucked up more. Yeah, it does do but, get you high. But then, like, so you know, it's a total addiction thing, right? Because I'll stop smoking blunts and I'll smoke a joint, and I'm like. Oh, I'm just high. I don't have anxiety because blunts give you that little like extra, like almost coffee kick to Wait, it, like a buzz. And so you don't get anxiety when so you smoke blunts? When I smoke blunts, I do, but I like it. But with joints, I'm like, nice oh, rush. this is regular weed. I forgot that I also <laughs> like this. Do this, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's very dumb. But uh, you know, somebody actually just blew me a fucking pipe, like a a pink hot pink bowl. That's cool. So I think I'm gonna try to like transition over as best as possible. The problem with that is you get the butane over and over again. They say right, you, but it's like how much butane are you getting? Shut up. Yeah. Well, some kids fucking Jesus. dying. All right, they're definitely boarding. It's the first. First oh suicide God. kid bomber. Mommy. I mean, is he being stolen? No. Should he be doing something? <laughs> Do you know what he is? He's doing? Oh, he's going to the family bath. He yeah. does not. That's like a fucking dog with a bath. Dude, kids sometimes just do not want to piss. My son will have to. He's holding his dick with full fist. And he's like, and I'm like, dude, all right, let's go to the bathroom. And he's like, no, no, I will not. And I'm like, dude, you got to piss. And he's see. like, absolutely not. I will not. And I'm like, I'm going to sit you on the toilet until you fucking let it go. And it's well, like that. My friend is a like a not a behavioral therapist, but a girl's leadership, like whatever. She, and she's uh, with like raising kids. I don't know. She's in that world. But like um, she goes, that's the last thing they have control over. Mm -hmm. So like, you don't tell me. Yeah. I'll decide. It's the only thing they have control. Who <laughs> comes when it comes. Yeah. But like that, and so they want to like put their foot down. Yeah, yeah, that it's makes so sense. Weird. Like, but you have to piss. Yeah, <laughs> trust me, it'll be better. That kid was screaming bloody murder. Yeah, he's still doing it. Oh, he almost got out. <laughs> that was like the horror <laughs> where he gets out and then gets dragged back to hell. <laughs> oh, just to piss. He's like, mommy, yeah. no. I, that, that's the thing when I'm talking about happiness goes down. Mm -hmm. That guy doesn't want that moment. <laughs> he doesn't want everyone staring at him. He's like, you're a bad dad. You have to drag this kid to the bathroom. But oh the, my god she oh, had to come wow. running. the wife had to come running oh that's the best oh and he's he's just hands the, up the he's dad like, palms up to the heavens called him a jerk he's like that's really good it's like oh yeah there dude there's times where i have to catch myself where i'm just like what the fuck dude like any yeah, like, like <laughs> what you could piss with her not me it's the same fucking bathroom you, asshole. you don't think i worked hard for this family uh-huh 
oh, there's nothing worse than being on the road for a weekend and my son, like, then getting home and I'm expecting, like, soldier come home to yeah. a dog uh-huh. energy. And he's just like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> so- earn, earn me back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. Uh, all right. All right. Good episode. Yeah. Good fucking last minute episode. Thank you very much. Check Thank out you. my canon, all his fucking podcasts and everything. And the special, May 18th. May 18th will YouTube. be on YouTube.com. I'll post about it on my Instagram account. Appreciate it. All right. Well, that's the episode, everybody. Um, listen, I think I might have gone overboard in the introduction. I did it from a from a bathtub. Uh, I'm trying to multitask my re- my relaxation time and my fucking work time. And I don't know if it showed the level of professional that I am. And I'd like to apologize for these earlier actions. I'd like to lay it all bare for you, as is you know metaphored by this backdrop that I directed on. YouTube.com slash Ari Shafir. That's right. I'm laying it all on the line. Laying it bare. Bearing my soul. Being a blank slate. A, a, a backdropless podcast, if you will. I've made mistakes, and I'll continue to make mistakes because I enjoy doing them. And, you know, how are you going to not do something you enjoy? So that's the episode, everybody. There is something I'm forgetting to tell you, and I don't know what it is. I tell you the storytelling show on Monday? I, I must have, right? Anyway, something. It was something for sure. Oh, the whole thing with my kid. Dude, the fucking lady. We could have gotten right through. We could have gotten right through. And then at some point, you can't be rude. You can't be like, hey, uh, you guys are taking way too long. They made him register, and there's like, oh, the email's already used. I was like, anyways, can we go? Three, two more lanes open from one to three. And it all went. We could have podcasted for another time. We could have saved it. Can you imagine having that as your baby, by the way? The screaming? It didn't stop. We talked to some lady right afterwards. We talked to some lady and she was like, can you imagine that? She goes, I just want to give him some whiskey. That's smart. That's smart. Why don't you fucking, they're, they're all on edge, these kids. Give them a shot. Calm them. Calm them down. Why wouldn't you? What, is it going to stunt their growth? We're on so many GMOs now. It'll average out to what we should be naturally. That's science. That's pure science. Researched. Well, that's the episode, you guys. I, I I don't know if there's anything else to say. The 300 bucks, I guess, was worth it. It was cheaper than a flight. The flight was 699. Renting it was like five something plus gas, 650. It was a better drive. I'd, I I'll do it again that way. Um, yeah, I guess everything's turning out pretty great in my life. Um, you know, you make mistakes here or there. All right. You guys, that's the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this has been uh, really, really great for me. And uh, please tune in next week. Should be um, maybe Chris DeSefano and maybe uh, Joe Liz coming. Um, some other stuff. Fun, fun things. Subscribe. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. Ha, <laughs> ha.